What's up, everybody, and welcome to Real Time for the Real Everyday Movie Fan. I'm Josh Williams. And I'm Ryan Murphy. And today we're giving you a real time top 10 of the best movies of 2016 so far. Now, this is not a list that we made overall, this is Ryan's list, and my list will come later on. We have seen some different films. This we have. Year. I've seen some films he hasn't. I've seen two films I think you haven't seen. You've seen several films I haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, you've seen more of the uh, independent films. Like the, I love my know. independent films. Yeah. They're a special place in my heart. I've all pretty the time. much seen all the big summer <laughs> movies, plus a couple that you kind of sent me out to see. Uh, I forced you to see those. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, so let's get right into it. What are your honorable mentions? My honorable mentions, well, uh, the only three films, I've only seen 13 films this year, so my honorable mentions would be three of them. They're not really honorable mentions. They're, They're dishonorable, kind of dishonorable mentions, mentions almost in a sense. Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, Independence Day, Resurgence, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. Okay, I kind of had fun with that one, though. That, these were all pretty, pretty, three pretty bad movies. Uh, so, but you're still there on all mentions, so you know, hey, dishonorable okay. mentions. I, I even wrote that on the thing. <laughs> oh so. yeah, you did. Right. Yeah. All right, so let's get right into your top ten list. What mm-hmm. do you got for number ten? Number ten, I have X Men Apocalypse. All this right. movie was just not up to spec. This, I mean, it, it just was not. Uh, this movie did not have a very f- clear direction forward to go. It was just. Uh, kind of a mess, and the villain was just not very, didn't do a whole lot. He just kind of blew smoke up his own butt for most of the movie. It wasn't the apocalypse we knew from the comics. It was just, it was a complete jumble of X-Men characters, and it, the plot was a complete jumble. It went from one place to the other without having really a clear uh, line of, let's do this, that, because it's moving us toward our end game. And it was just sort of all over the place, and it wasn't, didn't end up being a very satisfying movie at all. But it's mainly on your list because you're, like I said, you've had a very small finite. It's maybe selected. on my list because I have a very, and and that's what you'll kind of notice is that uh, pretty much up until you get to about up until I get to like the second half, I'm gonna yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. But I mean, you like you disliked it more than I did. I yeah, actually liked it a little bit more, so. even though it didn't even make my honorable mentions list or my top ten. Mm-hmm. I mean, you pretty much didn't like the movie. It's kind of. Funny that it's on your top ten of the rest of the yeah. year so far, but so. all right. What's your number nine? Number nine is Warcraft, another movie that wasn't the best. Uh, and this movie just it tried a lot harder. Mm-hmm. It, it definitely it really had did. some sincerity to it, but it was just kind of again kind of clumsily handled. Candled. The characters' mm-hmm. speech wasn't really the way people talk, and it was just sort of frustrating. And the acting was often wooden. Um, it did try real hard for some for to go for some serious stuff and go for go for the heart in a lot of places. And that and that that counts, you know. Effort counts in that in that regard. And there was some impressive visual effects and stuff. Overall, though, just uh, I mean, it treated it, it treated the audience like they were all Warcraft fans, like mm-hmm. assuming we yeah. kind of new stuff. And uh, it's just kind of a weird movie overall. I actually, I think that was its biggest problem. I mean, if it would have maybe gone the route of trying to appeal, not necessarily appeal to everyday movie going fan, mm-hmm. but just. Try their hardest to give actual explanations of things, not just throw it in our faces like we should know it. Mm. It may have been better, but Absolutely. who knows? All right, you're number eight. Number eight, Alice Through the Looking Glass. <laughs> I, did, I was not as hard on this as the critics. This were. actually, that could have been a little, well, I'm surprised it wasn't a little bit higher. I, mean, yeah. I don't like that movie. Uh, uh, say what? You I don't like, like, I didn't like oh, Alice That's why you saw that too, yeah. Um, I didn't like yeah, it, it was, it was not, it was not very good, but it was, I hate to say it gets a pass because it's a kids movie, um, especially since now we live in an age where there yeah, kind of is no such almost. thing as kids movies. <laughs> Uh, but it's it was just I mean it was just a goofy little movie, and didn't really wasn't really pretending to be anything it was not. So it wasn't like like what bothers me is that X Men and Warcraft are like trying to be these like uber serious like mm-hmm. you know epic movies that are like Makes really sense. trying to impress audience. Whereas Alice is just like you know what uh, we know we're just cashing in on the first movie. We're making it for for kids. It's fun. It's you know running around and Sasha Baron Cohen being funny and stuff like that. So I mean I, I wasn't too hard on it because of that, and I did have fun with it. So surprisingly, it's, out of that whole movie, Sasha Baron Cohen's the best part. He is now, the best in my part, opinion. I think. I think and it's so. weird because I don't really like him that much. Yeah. All right, number seven. Number seven is Free State of Jones. This is I still want to see it. Yeah, it's it's our first like like kind of serious movie on this list. You know, like. Uh, Something going for critical acclaim. Now, like I mentioned, it does have its flaws. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. Again, it's just an unfocused script. And in this case, what I mean by unfocused is that it's just, it doesn't, I couldn't tell you what it was about. I couldn't sum up the plot. If you watch the trailers, the trailers don't really do it justice. There's a lot more going on in the movie than in the trailers. It kind of goes way past that in time than what you see in there. Uh, and, I mean, other than just being about this really cool guy who did some really cool stuff for, you know, black people during and after the Civil War, I mean, it doesn't really have a clear, uh, a clear, uh, a clear enough plot line, really, to even. To, but I mean, there are some good moments in it. There's definitely some good moments, some heartbreaking moments, some, 
you know, tender moments, and, 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 and I appreciated the effort. Like I said, kind of like with Warcraft, I just really appreciated the effort. Do you think okay. Matthew McConaughey even has a shot at an Oscar? Not at an Oscar not nomination, an Oscar not okay. this year. It's, it's coming out in the summer. It's not a very acclaimed film, so I don't yeah. think he's going to. All right, your number six. Number six is Money Monster. Uh, this movie was actually a lot of fun when I when when I was watching it. Uh, it's it's just a, a it, it wraps it pulls you in and it, you go along on this on this ride with these guys and it's not too long of a movie. It's actually only like an hour and forty five minutes or something. But uh, George Clooney, of course, is very. I couldn't picture anyone else but him doing this role. It really? was just like yeah, it was just like perfect for him. Uh, and uh, the the new guy, I forget his name because he's just like brand new. But the guy who plays the hostage taker is really good in it. Mm. And it was just a, it was it was funny at times. It, it was really good, but it's 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 lower on the list because when it got over, it was just like. Okay, what was the point? Mm. Like, what's really changed here? What did they, it, 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 it seems to think its own plot is more complicated than it really is. Like, mm-hmm. you know exactly what's going to happen ten minutes into the movie, but it just sort of like you know, like the, the poster for the movie says, "Not every conspiracy is a theory," and it's like, oh, it's going to be some conspiracy movie where you find there's complicated loops. No, it's really not. It's, it's a really simple <laughs> movie, uh, and that was that was what was disappointing to me. It was, it had a lot of fun with it, but then at the end, it was just like. Huh, I don't really know what I'm supposed to take away from that. So interesting. Yeah. I want to see just because of the dynamic between George Clooney and Julie Roberts. Julie Roberts, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I don't think I've seen. I, think I can't remember the last movie they were in together. I know there had to be. It's about Ocean's Twelve, probably. Yeah, yeah, probably a long time ago. But mm-hmm. all right, what do you got for number five? Number five is Angry Birds, and this was really perplexing okay. me as I wrote this list <laughs> because it's... I took the Free State of Jones and Money Monster. I took the two like you know more criti- critically kind of critic aimed kind of films, the more serious films, and I'm putting this really ridiculous animated uh, film. You like it more than most. I yeah, I didn't. It's I weird. really didn't mind it at all, and I really kind of had fun with it. And when it was over, I really kind of. I mean. And again, like Money Monster is like, well, I don't really know what I'm supposed to take away from this. Well, with Angry Birds, it was it, it was a fun little adventure, and mm-hmm. you know, it was like typical animated films. A lot of animated films it's about an outcast and you know finding one's place and stuff like that. Which is I've like, heard Jason Sudeikis is great in it. Yeah, the, the the main character is actually I really came away with it like liking the main character and actually <laughs> wanting to see like a, a a weekly cartoon series based on these characters. Well, like that to me is what's really important with films is that if you to actually me, come across wanting that when they when they you know, said Angry Birds is going to be a movie. I was like, eh, maybe I can see more as a TV series and yeah. a show, and mm-hmm. maybe that could have been a little more appealing. But mm-hmm. you know, hey, it's it's already happened. And they're probably going to make a sequel, most likely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, your number four. Uh, number four, Captain America: Civil War. Okay. Now, uh, now we're getting into the good stuff. Now we're, we're <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, Cat- somewhat. Somewhat. Captain America: Civil War. I have complicated feelings on this. I saw it twice. More than it is. Me. It is. It is definitely. I mean, it was very, very entertaining, and that's. I mean, at the bottom line, we're going to see movies to be entertained, so I can't dis- discount that. Uh, at the same time, it's very frustrating when it hits the third act and you realize, oh my gosh, this movie never had a story. <laughs> this movie never had a story to tell. Like, it was just. It was. It was. I mean, it's literally just about getting the Avengers to fight each other, which is fun to watch. But when it gets to the third act and you realize that the third act just makes it so that there's never been any story at all. And it, it's, I mean, and it's, it's difficult to talk about without spoiling it because even people who see it might not really understand what I'm trying to get at. And for me to try to explain what I mean or how I saw it, it I would have to delve into some of the material. But mm-hmm. if you watch our, I don't know if we, we didn't do a spoiler review, but the third act is totally disconnected from the rest of the film. And that's what really frustrates me. It still frustrates me. Uh, and I just I included this high because it was really entertaining for the first two thirds. It was really a solid movie for the first two thirds and really had some great stuff not just with Captain America and Iron Man but also with some of the supporting characters like Vision and Scarlet Witch mm-hmm. great stuff in that regard so I'm gonna I still have it this high for that but in terms of like as a writer as someone who went to school and studied at least a semester of screenwriting uh, <laughs> um, it's uh, it just was not very uh, satisfying in that regard so well fair enough I'll have my thoughts on mine on that movie <laughs> on my list yeah so he's like, yeah, we'll get, we'll see. That. We'll see. <laughs> Number three. Number three is Finding Dory, um, okay. and this movie just like had a much better story than Captain America: Civil War. This movie told a much better story. You know, at the first, I, I was very skeptical about making a sequel to Finding Nemo, and you know, focusing on the character of Dory, but. Um, this movie really takes what was a supporting character in the first film and makes you really appreciate her as a character. I mean, the whole movie is kind of like Dory, like. 
I, what's the word I'm looking for? But it's, it, I mean, it really is like Dory praising. Like it's like, oh, Dory, Dory you can do anything, and mm -hmm. you know, it's like let's make everyone love Dory, and they kind of succeed at that, you know. And it's and it's yeah. really kind of a touching and, and good story. There's that one part that really still bugs me. That's the only reason it's not really higher is the is a, it is a scene with the octopus that you and I oh, talk about. Yeah, it's just it's really stretching disbelief. Yep, it really I mean, is. He camouflages a lot, and I'm okay with that. But there's one scene in particular where he like just. And no one sees him, mm -hmm. and it's just like I just can't. I mean, it like almost ruins the whole movie for me. Like it yeah. honestly does. Like it's just that dumb. Like, and we're talking about a movie where fish talk, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, I mean, it was a good story, a solid story, and a, a solid follow up to Finding Nemo that surprisingly didn't recreate. wasn't just a repeat of Finding Nemo. I didn't think yeah. so. Fair enough. All right. Your number two. Number two is The Jungle Book, which this is... This is a good movie. ...really surprising to me because I don't like remakes. I don't... Mm -hmm. Well, I, I generally... I might enjoy myself when I go see them, but I don't like the idea of remakes. I'm very resistant to them. Uh, this was just a solid movie. It's been a long time since I saw the first, the first one, so... I don't really have that to compare it to, but this, not only is it a rousing adventure, and it's, it, it feels great when you go through the whole movie and don't have much to complain about. Like, Captain America, I'm like, I'm having a great time. Please don't let there be a catch. And in the third act, there's a catch. Oh, God. <laughs> but when you make it through the whole movie and the whole film is just, you know, a good adventure and well done all the way throughout and a satisfying conclusion, it's really refreshing. Mm -hmm. And the other thing besides that is we talk about the visual effects. This is the so first movie stunning. in maybe 10 or 15 years that has really done anything really groundbreaking with visual effects. Ever since, you know, we, we've talked mm -hmm. about in the 90s, you know, you had, we went to go see films for the effects and, you know, it were odd. And then ever since the dawn of CGI, ever since, you know, Lord of the Rings and stuff, it's just been, you can do anything, so nothing really wows you. And this movie wows you. Very this is much the first so. movie in a long time that has made anybody really just like, wow. Mm -hmm. Can't believe that, that they did that, you know. Absolutely groundbreaking. I mean, you almost couldn't tell unless they were... You know, when they weren't talking, you could almost think, oh, that's a real animal. It yeah. was just absolutely amazing. It's crazy. All right, so this is the number one movie that Ryan considers to be the best movie of 2016 so far. My number one pick for the first half of 2016, not counting movies I haven't seen yet that have come yes, out that I watched exactly. on the video, that's the caveat is there. Is 10 Cloverfield Lane. That is a I, good choice. I was so impressed with this movie. This is, I mean, it's... It's so good at what it does. Oh, yeah. It's a tense movie. It's, it's sort of a psychological thriller. It really, you don't know what way it's headed. I mean, you don't, I mean it, it introduces certain things, and then it goes, it goes back on that idea, and you don't know what certain people's motivations are. And when it all comes through, and you, and you really start thinking about it as you're driving home from the movie, you know, and you're starting to think about it when you should be focusing on traffic. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, it's really just sort of like, yeah, and that was that way. And so this is really with the story. This is what, what was really going on. And that story that you realize was being told the whole time is actually a really fascinating story mm -hmm. um, and really terrific in that regard. And it was a fun ride to get there and actually made you like the characters and care about the characters. And, and uh, it, was, it was a movie that really was uh, very effective to me. It affected me that day. And uh, I just still really, for all those reasons, I just really still feel very highly about it. And so that's why, even though as good as Jungle Book was, I'm still counting Tank Cloverfield Lane as my number one pick of the year. So. It's a very, very good choice. I mean, I think the stand, he is actually definitely the standout actor of the movie is... Um, John Goodman. John Goodman. John Goodman. I, th I thought he should get an Oscar nomination. I think so, too. I mean, he did an he amazing job. He, <laughs> yeah. He did an amazing job. I mean, he yeah, played he a creepy guy extremely well. He played well. a creepy guy extremely well, yeah. So. All right. That'll do it for today, folks. Thank you very much for watching. What did you think of Ryan's top 10 list of 2016 so far? Jump in the comments below and tell us whether you think he's right or not. And also whether you, what is your number one movie of the year so far? And we also, I think we are, in a, we are all in agreement with the audience that he needs to get caught up on some movies until the end of the year of best 2016, yeah, period. Yeah, we got like freaking Kung Fu Panda 3. Hey, sure. we'll get there, I mean, we'll get there. <laughs> also, folks, if you like what you watched, then please... Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see more of our content in the future. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Josh Williams. I'm Ryan Murphy. And thank you for keeping it real. With real time.